few things I've been asked to talk to you about today, and one of those things is one of the freedoms that we as Albertans uh, come to depend upon as we live our lives, and, and that is the uh, freedom to drive. And, uh, and in particular, I was asked to talk about that freedom in the, in the context uh, of, of how we age, and, and that, that's important because driving, of course, for most Albertans and most, most Calgarians, it's the thing that they depend upon to visit their grandchildren, to get groceries, to see their friends, to go to the air crew association lunches, uh, basically whatever they want to do. And having a driver's license is, frankly, in, in our province, in our country, is the ultimate freedom, uh, the ultimate way to get around and maximize your independence and, and uh, be full participants in society. It's not the only way, but it's most certainly the most convenient and, and uh, for most people, the most desirable way. And as we get older, as we all age, keeping a driver's license and the freedom and the independence that comes with that, uh, for some people, it can become more tenuous. And uh, I'm going to talk about that a little bit. It's, and it's an important topic because the debate over when somebody should or should not have their driver's license uh, sometimes gets played out in the media. And uh, from what I think I've witnessed, uh, not always accurately. So I uh, want something our transportation department in my office deals with on a regular basis uh, through calls, letters, emails, and meetings. And uh, believe me, there's people on both sides of the issue. So it's, I know it's important to many of you here. And in fact, even uh, over lunch and uh, before we came to lunch, I've uh, had, had questions from a few people in the room about that. So perhaps we've chosen a topic that, people, that matters to people today. And, and I, I appreciate this opportunity. There's a few misconceptions, but one fact is our population is aging and the percentage of us that will be seniors keeps increasing as the baby boomers, boomers reach their senior years and people are still living longer. What I always like to say is there's only two groups of people, those who are seniors and those that want to be. <laughs> In fact, uh, many people, uh, and, and, and because of that, uh, there, are, there are many people that are outliving their ability to drive which is, uh, in, in political terms, a, a fairly recent development, or at least a, a, bigger, a bigger situation than perhaps was the case 10 and 20 years ago, and that has everything to do with the longevity of, uh, of Albertans. So our goal, I want you to know, for Alberta transportation is to find the right balance between enhancing the ability of Albertans to, of all ages to, uh, to be mobile and keep their driver's license, and uh, and maintaining the safety for everybody on the roads. And believe me, it's not about how old you are. It's about your ability as an individual to safely operate a vehicle, full stop. Uh, fact, this is an interesting fact. There, we actually have in Alberta today a 103-year-old person with a driver's license. Interesting fact. Uh, we encourage people to, yeah, that's worth an applause, absolutely. <laughs> They're not here, but it, but that, uh, uh, not only are they able to drive, but they've obviously done a few other things to look after themselves along the way. We encourage people to drive as long as they can, as long as they can safely do so without regard for their age. That said, we do have some age thresholds at which we require uh, a doctor to complete a medical report form before renewing a driver's license. Uh, I want to emphasize that these thresholds are not arbitrary and that we do not make assumptions about people based on their age. But the thresholds are based on research, uh, that some of it that shows some medical conditions and cognitive challenges are more, more uh, common at certain ages than other ages. And I want to stress again that the, uh, your, in our view, your ability to drive or not is uh, evaluated on an individual basis. Uh, generally, a medical report form is required at age 75 under our current legislation, uh, again at age 80, and every two years after that. And some, of, some might say, well, I've asked for more of that, that I guess the phrase I put, at a minimum. That would be the at a minimum phrase would appropriately go in there. However, a, a doctor uh, or a register of motor vehicle services may require a report, a report more frequently based on information that they have. A doctor's personal assessment of an individual uh, and the register of motor vehicles, perhaps based on a driving record if someone's had a number of tickets, a number of collisions, a number of situations crop up that might trigger something in, in our, uh, our, uh, our records that uh, maybe it's time to have another look at a particular driver. Uh, and, and 
that driver could be young or old, but the fact is when those triggers come in, we do take a second look and I, I think you would probably agree that that's probably a good way to keep the road safe is to first target those people that are showing up with a diff with offenses and traffic accidents on a, on a very regular basis, regardless of their age. The medical report forms, uh, if, they, uh, if, if they're required, uh, get mailed to uh, you with your driver's license renewal form and they're available at the registry agent, uh, you know, from Alberta Transportation Driver Fitness and Monitoring and sometimes from your doctor directly. And those medical forms are used by your doctor and uh, to evaluate your vision, hearing, cognitive abilities and any medical condition that may affect your ability to drive. And at this point, you'd be saying, you should be saying, thank God, I don't want a politician deciding whether I'm healthy enough to drive. Um, and, and believe me, we don't make those decisions as politicians. Doctors make those decisions. Your, doc, your, your, your doctor may also uh, require further cognitive testing. Uh, I know there's been some talk about some RMD tests or recommend you take a road test before uh, approving a driver's license. And these are judgment calls that your doctor makes about you based on his or her evaluation of your medical condition. And based on the results of the test, the SMART MD or other tests, the doctor may or may not recommend a drive-able test. And uh, I raise that because that's one of the questions we get. What is a drive-able test? Well, it's a test that asks you to do six tasks on a computer screen that simulate driving skills such as the ability to judge gaps in traffic. Uh, I want to point out that neither the SMART MD test nor the drive able test are mandatory uh, from Alberta transportation's perspective. You can, actually, you can actually say, no, I think I'd rather just take a regular driving test. That is a choice that you can make. Um, and both tools, uh, your, your doctors may decide to use, uh, or they may have other evaluations that they, with their medical competence and their training and their abilities, may uh, decide are, are better ways to tell. And you should talk to your doctor about your options. Uh, it's uh, because their options are there and, and I know it's sometimes uh, people feel, I don't know if intimidate is the right word, but they feel obligated to take their doctor's advice and, and I'm certainly not telling you to not take your doctor's advice, but I'm recommending in as friendly a way as I can that if you're not sure, ask your doctor questions. Ask your doctor what your choices are because it, you, you have choices about uh, how you get evaluated for, for your driving abilities. And you can opt, again, you can opt to take a standard road test if you're uncomfortable with the other tests. Some people uh, are not comfortable with computers. And so consequently, they'd feel uncomfortable with a computer test. So we can do that without, without test people without making them be on a computer. And that's perfectly reasonable. And there's allowances already in the system and in the legislation to do so. Most of the time, you know, we feel our doctors know us pretty well, but again, you should never feel like you can't ask what the choices are. Uh, you, uh, just for a record, you can contact Alberta Transportation's Driving Fitness and Monitoring Branch to ask to have your file reviewed. If uh, you feel, if you disagree with something that's happened, a letter you've got, uh, an evaluation you've received, uh, anything like that, and a medical review committee can also review your file and provide advice to the register of motor vehicles. Uh, <clears throat> based on the reviews of the advice, the registrar makes the decision to renew your license, renew it with conditions, or suspend your license. Uh, even after going through all of these choices and all these tests, you may, you, you, it's, it's possible you could have your license taken away. And if that happens, even at that point, even if you've got talked to your doctor, had your choices, done a test, whether it's one you like or one you didn't like, whether whatever it has is, let's say it, you say it, say people, Albertans get to the point where they lose their driver's license, you can still appeal this decision to the Alberta Transportation Safety Board. In every case, in every case, you can appeal the decision to the Alberta Transportation Safety Board. Not everybody knows that. And the Alberta Transportation Safety Board will review your files and can uphold the decision, reverse the decision, or ask for further testing before making a decision. In some cases, a conditional license is another option your doctor or register may propose. A conditional license is one way that we keep people driving longer than we could with an unconditional license. Uh, it could restrict your driving time to certain hours a day or certain distances from home or certain, certain types of roads. And it might even be really specific. 
I, in, in my, uh, I believe there's one case where we actually had somebody that lived in one of the major cities in the province that owned some land with some cattle on it on an acreage outside of the city. Their, their ability to drive had diminished and, and uh, we, they gave them a license that between hours, daylight hours that were not rush hour hours, they could drive from their home to their acreage to feed or feed and water their cattle and straight back home as long as they got back home before rush hour is back in. Now, there's lots of options. We obviously can't have three and a half million different rules for driving, but, but the fact is, with it, within our ministry, within the rules, uh, with it, with, we try to accommodate Albertans to keep them driving. And, and where we can set individual conditions that allow some mobility while still protecting the safety of everybody else, we try to do that. So it's, it's not, things aren't as cut and dried as what most people think. Although the rules are the rules at the end of the day. Uh, I hope that clears up some of the misconceptions. Um, and and uh, in case I haven't done well enough, I'll take questions later on. But there's uh, a few other misconceptions that uh, uh, I'd like to talk about a little bit. First, Alberta Transportation is not out to take your driver's license away. We want you to drive as long as you can do so safely. It's very important. Second, you do not automatically lose your license based on the results of a Samard test, drive able test, or any other test. The tests are screening tools that your doctor uses. And uh, again, the, uh, based on, on those tests, the, the driver makes a recommendation to the uh, to the registrar of motor vehicles. Uh, again, again, a drive able is another case. You don't automatically lose your license. It's a tool your doctor may choose or not choose to use. And again, you can choose to take a standard driving test if you don't want to do that. And uh, so, so the, it's important, again, and I, I know I'm repeating myself a little bit, but I think that's one of the most important points when I, when I talk to Albertans that are concerned about this. You have a choice. That's probably the main misunderstanding that people have is that, that, that they, some people think they have no choice. You have to do a specific test, no other test, and you have to live with the results, and, and that's that cut and dried package finished. It's, it's, uh, you actually uh, have the ability to, uh, to, uh, to have some choices and to uh, challenge that. And lastly, neither your doctor nor the people at Drive Able have the ability to take away your license. Only. The Registrar of Motor Vehicles has the authority to cancel and suspend a driver's license. Only that person has the authority in Alberta to take away or cancel, to tra cancel a driver's license. The, and the Registrar's decision is based on the complete file that usually contains a doctor's report, medical information, road test results, your past driving record, you know, tickets, collisions, all that kind of stuff. Uh, at Alberta Transportation, we, we, you know what, we, we're still working to improve the tools and processes that we use with, uh, with uh, aging drivers. And uh, the research that we do, I think, supports our goal of finding the balance between maximum mobility and safety. Because that really is the line we need to walk on. As many people as possible driving, as long as they can do it safely. That's our goal. <laughs>